guys! Welcome to another episode of Tea and Type. I'm really excited to have Peter here from the Peter Von Hansen channel. Yeah, I'm really glad to have you here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you so much. Hey guys, I'm Peter. I'm an ENFP. Whoa, look at all these comments. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm an ENFP. I've been a supporter of this channel for a long while and I'm very excited to be here today to talk about whatever we're going to talk about. topic that we came up with was male and female NFPs. I mean, was there ever a time when you were growing up when you thought like, oh, it is a challenging being NFP? Well, without knowing the concept, but just like some challenges associated with that. I mean, yeah, especially it's more perhaps socially acceptable to be a female NFP. I think there's a lot of um, societal expectations to how you're supposed to be as a, as a young man or as a as a, as a guy and as a girl, where I think it's more okay for girls to be um, enthusiastic or to be, you know, more fanciful or colorful. And I think one of the things that I really struggled with was that I wasn't into sports. I wasn't into a lot of the physical activities that I don't have that SE, you know. <laughs> I was more interested in reading and I was more interested in learning new things and listening to old music and going into art and stuff. So if I did feel, you know, that FI, no one understands me. Will I ever find anyone that thinks the same way I do? So I think I was always pretty good at making friends, understanding people and knowing how to talk with people. But at the same time, I think the whole bonding ritual that comes with team sports, I never really connected with. Yeah, sports is huge. I hate sports. I do definitely see how that could be more of a challenge for guys. Oh, gym class was the worst time for me, but then people actually would make fun of me, but it, it wasn't... I feel like if I were a guy, it would be a lot more vicious making fun of me. Yeah. Yeah, for female NFPs, you know, I had all these, like, NFP problems, but... I would actually say I didn't get it exacerbated by social gender expectations. The only exception perhaps being FI and like Enneagram 4, I would like to do a lot of things in a contrarian way. Just generally like taking fun and being controversial. Like I would just say controversial statements. I don't know, I guess I was like playing with my FI. I didn't necessarily believe in all of them but I was like, experimenting to see which ones I do believe and just saying the opposite of what other people say to see how it makes me feel that's kind of looked down upon I guess for girls like being rebellious or like a pain in the <laughs> yeah that's interesting I bet a lot of FI dumb people are you know I feel the same way you do I've been where you've, you've been because I, I always felt like most ENFPs go through this like this crushing tea feeling of needing to be logical and practical and fit in more than standing out even though you feel like there's so much going on beneath the surface that was very present for me anyway when I was a teenager and when I was just starting to really have my own identity whoa whoa wait no this is so interesting because you felt a need to like fit in in a te way but i think i felt a need to fit in in like a si way oh. Oh. are we discovering something are we on the track to something oh i don't know no can you like explain what fitting in in a te way or doing anything else in a te way would entail the way i perceive my functions is that any and fi are kind of flighty and very all over the place and T is kind of an SI as well I guess but mostly T that's contra weighing that feeling of going like no you really should be logical you know that doesn't make sense or that doesn't you know so it's kind of pushing in the back of, of uh, FI and, and NE and going you know people wouldn't like it if you did this it's more of a you need to be proper you need to it's more present for some ENFPs than others perhaps the social level of the ENFPs where it is more focus on being accepted than standing out sometimes. Wait, that's kind of interesting. You, you see like FI as also like a flighty one, <laughs> a flighty cognitive function? <laughs> maybe, maybe, but mostly probably only in connection with any. It depends on the FI too, because I think a lot of what FI is, is trying to figure out who you are as an individual or your own personal stances. And I think that can be kind of flighty, depending on where you are and how you choose to express yourself. But definitely not as flighty as any. I guess F 
I is kind of like it's kind of solid to me. I mean, it, it can change, but it's kind of like not flighty. It's kind of like weighty. Except it's hard to trust in like the weight of. FI or feelings or moral ethics, you know? Maybe it's like a social thing, so like a cultural thing, like we're afraid to trust in the wisdom of, I don't know, feeling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think people are very tough on FI for being illogical. I think, I think FI is really an intricate system that is based on uh, logic to a large degree because it's, it's, it's more of a, a slanted logic, but at the same time, I think any logic is subjectively processed, no matter who you are, and, and you choose to pick the information that you want to, to, to create your way of looking at things or your reality, right? So I think, I think FI is logical in a way, but it's also changing, I think, because if you, if you pick up a new craze, if something new happens and you incorporate it into yeah. FI, you can have those, or I can anyway have those big transitions where you suddenly slowly or quickly kind of change completely on how you think yeah. about certain things. So I think that's what I meant oh. when I said flighty. But I also think that, I mean, like, for example, TI could change, obviously, like, as you get new in E or SE information. I do think that culturally there is more of a bias against feeling. It's not really feeling, it's like more, I guess, what do you call Okay, Alex and I was talking about FI once, and we described the feeling as some sort of, like, feeling of conscience. Like, if you have to kill a chicken and you feel like, <gasps> you know, like, something like this. Um, Except as a FI dom, I feel that, like, for almost every situation. Maybe not as intense, but I, I always know my feelings towards a particular subject or event or situation. I just, I just always know. Yeah. Um, kind of a burden sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting way of looking at it. I saw, maybe that's because I'm a guy, like I always saw feeling, introverted feeling, extroverted feeling more in connection to your opinions on things versus the group opinion. You know, so it's like, I, I don't see necessarily FI as something that viscerally makes you feel something, but something where you have an internal framework on how you feel about things and how you, how connected you are with them, you know? It's how closely connected you are with who you believe you are or who you have shaped yourself to be. Yeah, oh, it's exactly, no, that's exactly it. It's a self-referential framework. Yeah, um, exactly. The example that I always like to use is of this ENTP friend that I have, and we would talk about movies, and I would always be like, oh yeah, I see, like, merits, ABC, flaws, ABC, and then I would end the whole thing with, like, I like it, or I didn't like it. <laughs> I mean, despite seeing whatever thing, at the end of the day, it's I like it or don't like it subjectively. I would analyze why or why I don't like it personally, so it's a self-referential framework, but the he would always say, oh, this movie made a big impact to society during this time, and it discovered these new camera techniques, like all these objective things. Like, yeah, those were all facts, and at the end of the day, he would say it's a good movie or a bad movie. That's a bottom TI line, right? The yeah, line. specifically for ENFPs, I think the looking for information to share things is also very TE. Like the, um, the, the looking for uh, objective things in something you like, that make that makes you think it's better. Like to to, to know like in Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon that it was filmed with NASA lenses, so they could film it at night. Like that's something that's like an objective thing that you can look at and go, oh, that is super cool because this this yeah. thing made it cooler. You know, so it's like it's it's like having factual information, objective information that backs up why you think something is good. <laughs> TE, oh my gosh. You consciously try to develop your TE, I guess. So I think for me it's SI. Oh my gosh, ever since I was really little, I always had this pressing knowledge of gender roles. I just always knew. I saw it everywhere and it affected me so much and I was always like trying to fit into my role or whatever. I feel like it's just something SI because I was trying to fit into that social tradition. Despite being kind of rebellious, internally I really wish that I was kind of normal. I would google like how to be normal, like how to be a teenage girl. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting because I can so recognize that in myself but in a way dumber way, like in a way more <laughs> oblivious way, which makes sense because it's my auxiliary function. It's way more fumbling in the dark. You would look at something and go, is this masculine or is this feminine? Like it's more of a like <laughs> fumbling along trying to see what makes sense yeah i cared so much i guess gender has to do with like human <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the sentence of gender has to do with humans yeah but because i say that because i feel like the intp probably would not 
be, yeah, like their SI would be probably focused on something else, but my SI was so focused on like, oh my gosh, how do women behave? How do men behave? Let me make sure that I'm doing the right thing here. That's so funny. Yeah, because that's your third function. I think one of the things about that is it's kind of like a hidden identity, whereas I kind of looked at how things were and went, okay, so men are supposed to do this, women are supposed to do this, I won't do it. <laughs> it's more like a rebelling yeah. against it. There's a tension, right? It was so frustrating. There's a tension between your FI is like, well, this is kind of stupid and outdated. But, and then my SI is like, I want to fit into it so badly. Seriously, my, my wardrobe is a constant state of like some periods, I just buy what I love. And then other periods of time, I would be like, how exactly women in the 21st century are dressing right now and I try to like fit That's oh so yeah do funny. you think there's a tension between the NE and TE for you I think it's more for me the FI and TE like it's more like FI will get upset about something something small <laughs> and then TE will go come on that doesn't make any sense why would you be upset about this and then it would be more like a self-deprecation almost I think NE and TE is more two different ways of communicating for me if I'm in a social setting, I will be more any, I will be more excitable and stuff. And if I'm at work, I will be more tea and be exhausted. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because usually they need to use it more because their FI is higher, so their TE is more activated in trying to like temper it. Whereas like Alex, INTJ, like TE stronger than FI, I feel like she has to exercise her FI more. One example is just when I, I met this guy who I really like and I told Alex about it and she's like, how do you feel? Like, oh, I'm so glad you're feeling good. Like, go with your feelings. She's used to consciously using her FI to make sure that she doesn't like TE trample over her own values and other people's values and stuff like this. Um, and then I told my ENFP friend, she's like, do you even have a checklist of what you're looking for? Like, go make a checklist right now and see if he even fits before you get so excited by your feelings. I'm like, oh my god. That makes so much sense, yeah. I think that's why ENFPs in particular are attracted to thinkers. Because we see thinking as something that's more valid than feeling, perhaps. It's something where it's more, like, acceptable or something. It's, it's, it's almost like a superego thing. It seems like a Freudian superego thing where it's more like, observing what any FI is doing and reining it in every once in a while. So it's more appealing to us to look at thinkers and go, oh, these people know what's up, kind of. I feel like we value thinking so much. Maybe even like, especially since we have TI. I mean, do I have a TE? Oh my god. <laughs> <Yeah>. T <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, lo okay, no, I'm losing okay. it. Okay, I think especially since we have TE, like since TE is very like in goal oriented, we might be valuing thinking and logic a lot. So I used to think way before cognitive functions, I thought it was just you're either thinking or feeling. I used to think that I was like an INTP. But uh, have you ever thought that you were a thinker? Uh, I've never thought that I was a thinker. I think the first time I took a test, I got INFJ, which I think is hilarious now. But I think a lot of those online tests skew towards INTJ, INFJ and the way they ask questions. Those old tests, by the way, are hilarious. Like, look, your room is so clean. Or, I don't know, at least your background is like so neat right now. And those like really old tests would just be like, how messy is your room right yes. now? It would be like, <laughs> not messy. And <laughs> you're a judger. Do you like feeling things or thinking things? <laughs> are you an emotional person? Yes, you're a feeler. It's like, oh my God. I feel like that was pretty good. We like tangented our way onto the truth. No, I'm kidding. This is a great example of two any people who just take things one place and then go through a windy road towards something. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks so much for coming. And uh, audience, I hope you like this episode. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. Please subscribe for more videos. If you enjoy our content, consider flashing on Patreon. Do it. And... <laughs> oh, love it. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye! Bye. Ah, it's so awkward doing <laughs> outros and intros. I hate it so much. <laughs> yeah. No F.E. I know, I, I always feel, um, the, whenever I hear myself say the words like, share, and subscribe, I just want to hang myself. <laughs> it's uh, so awkward. <laughs>